Hello, it is Ryan, and I was on a flight the other day playing one of my favorite social spin slot games on chumbacasino.com. I looked over the person sitting next to me, and you know what they were doing? They were also playing Chumba Casino. Coincidence? I think not. Everybody's loving having fun with it. Chumba Casino is home to hundreds of casino style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere, even at 30,000 feet. So sign up now at chumbacasino.com to claim your free welcome bonus. That's chumbacasino.com and live the Chumba life. No purchase necessary. DTW, Void were prohibited by law. See terms and conditions 18 plus. Who remembers the BJ and Bill show all those years ago on WOLZ? Well, many have said they missed the show, and guess what? They're back! Welcome to the BJ and Bill podcast! And welcome to episode 7 of the BJ and Bill podcast. We have met our contractual obligations and done 6. Is that what it is? We had to do 6 in order to make a splash? I guess that's it. I don't know. I'm just going okay. by what I'm told. <laughs> that's all I ever do. That's all I ever do. That's fine. I appreciate that. Seven. We're going. I'm running out of fingers. Pretty, I know. What are we going to do? We'll I don't know. <laughs> it's not going to be good when we take our shoes off. I'll just tell you that right now. <laughs> I agree with you. Yes, it is. So um, you're at home still, and I understand. I there's furious packing going on, and I'm actually on the road visiting friends up in northern Georgia, but of course the podcast must go on, but that's plenty to talk about and to get in, uh, to, uh, get in with here as we dig in. So, so how goes the packing? Uh, it's going. Um, we've got, <laughs> believe it or not, we've got a lot more done than I thought we would have at this point in time, but we're just trying to get all the pictures off the walls. You can see behind me, you usually see pictures and everything else. Those are gone because I guess when they come in and do the pictures, they don't want family pictures up. So all the family pictures and all the stuff gone down and, you know, we're, we're getting ready for the big move. I, I will admit it is kind of weird. Not weird. It's very different from what I'm used to seeing with you because I'm used <laughs> to seeing you in, are you in a different room or is it in the same room? It's the same room. Just everything is off the wall. Of course, people listening on the podcast couldn't give a damn what it looks like but uh, for me looking at you yes normally the walls behind you are full of shelves and knickknacks and photos and pictures and all that and all i see is a little like a like a china cabinet or a curio cabinet behind you there so yep, good job there. good job i must admit my wife is working hard wow is she putting you to work a little i've done you know a few little projects here and there uh i i had the fun Tell me, we just got perfect. We went to Walmart the other day just because my wife needed something at Walmart. She wanted to get that uh, bubble wrap and stuff to do some packing with. Yep. We was walking down the aisle, and I don't know what were in them, but a lady had unpacked like about eight boxes, big old boxes. But she had already tore them down and put them in another box, you know, so she could take them out. So my right. wife goes, which was a smart thing to do. Can we have those boxes? And, of course, the girl says, yeah, you can have those boxes. Sure. So I was busy putting boxes together all day yesterday because, you know, she she had taken them down. So, you know, they for throwaway purposes or recycling right. purposes or whatever they right. do. So I was building boxes yesterday. That's terrific. And that's, I mean, they probably, whoever you asked at Walmart, she probably didn't know that, oh, we sell boxes just over <laughs> yeah. on the next aisle over there. So go <laughs> buy some, Grandpa. But no, they gave you free boxes. That's yeah, nice of them. So, good and job. We were asking them where the bubble wrap was. <laughs> awesome. So I want to know about, uh, I, I, you know, I usually go, when I go to the mountains, I usually go to eastern Tennessee, or I like, Gatlinburg mm -hmm. and uh, Sevierville. And of course, uh, you know, that's Dollywood area. So right. you are actually in Georgia, right? Yes. Northern Georgia, Blue Ridge, LAJ, that kind of thing. And what do you, do you enjoy it there? It's very pretty. It's very, it is, it is the opposite of Florida, Florida, flat, warm beach, Georgia, mountains, cool trees. <laughs> so oh, no, yeah, but, I will admit, Florida has not been the warmest this week. No, everybody's having a cold. Everybody's having cold. So much for global warming, which 
if you really want to step into an issue there, we could. But but no, I, to answer your question, it's it's totally beautiful because I've I did plan to come here at a time when leaves were changing and and all of that. It's not I wouldn't call it full on leaf changing season, colorful season yet, but there's a lot of it. You know, it's getting started and it's really pretty. And I don't normally get that. Well, I you know what. I haven't, I'll have to get back to you on that because this will be my first fall and winter in Gainesville, Florida, which is a lot farther north than where I used to live down in, you know, Venice and Sarasota and all that. And of course, there's no real change of season in Sarasota, Florida. It's the same all the time. Um, So I'll let you know when I get back to Gainesville and see what the trees are like there. But here in Georgia, it's definitely, it's beautiful. It's just, it's a little cold for me but that's okay. I brought a second sweater and a jacket and all of that stuff. So I'm fine. And it's beautiful. Just beautiful. I, Fresh air I'll is warn, a wonderful thing. I'll warn you. I Uh-oh. lived in Gainesville for a year. It gets cold in Gainesville. We lived in a, I don't know, do I want to call it manufactured home, a manufactured mobile home? home? I don't uh, know what could. I want to call it, but I worked at a radio station and the station was actually in a mobile home mm. and next to the station was another mobile home where they let pretty much, you know, the guy that ran the radio station live in that mobile home. So that's where I stayed. And uh, we had pipes that froze at least twice. Oh, boy. Well, I'm, you know, I live in a civilized part of town with real apartments (laughs) and real, you know, so no mobile, not that, not that I shouldn't, you know, don't, don't be writing hate mail now. I understand your manufactured housing is, very civilized and very nice and all that, but no, I'm I'm in something that is a little more, um, you know, central air and central heat and all of that kind of stuff. So I'm not too worried about it. And and I was actually in Gainesville. I moved there in, at the end of January, so it was still kind of winter, kind of cool, and it was it very was nice. January. I mean, really, January, February, and even March in that area. Oh yeah. Cool. Oh, terrific. I I have a. Uh, you know, I have a, a a porch, a front patio that doesn't is not screened in, but in the winter time, yeah, I could leave my little door, French doors open, and let in some fresh air, and it was beautiful. So, anyway, long story short, I'm sure people are already getting snowed out in other parts of the country, or are getting whatever they get. Even though I heard that the California that like Los Angeles has been in the 90s in the past few days or something. So the weather is crazy as usual so wherever you are we hope you're having a good fall and winter season out there whatever that means for you because some people really like the winter season so i have kinfolk in indiana yes and they've been telling me it's like a yo-yo up there you know one day you know it's like 75 80 degrees and we're not wearing coats and the Mm -hmm. next day it's like 45 to 50 yes so sure. I get it. And I don't, there's no rhyme or reason to it. Does that mean global warming? Does that mean global craziness? I don't know. So anyway, that's fine. Now, I that's know fine. that you're staying with a friend of ours. Yes. Somebody and, who was actually on the BJ and Bill show a couple of times. Yes. And, and I was looking at her Facebook page mm-hmm. and I noticed she was out cleaning up a side of a mountain or a hill uh, and recycling things as, I, that was, she only posted that maybe twenty minutes before our show today. Were you That's part correct. of that? Were you part of that? <laughs> I, I, I will. I, I admit I was not. That was the morning. <laughs> that was her and that was her and her husband on the morning dog walk, which is uh, where they live. Is um, literally on a mountain, not a mountain mountain. I mean, not like snow capped peaks kind of a thing. But they live in a nice rural area off the beaten path which only in the past month they've paved the roads here they've been living here for 15 years um but anyway yes um uh our friend our friend vicky wagner and her husband rick have uh, been uh living here for a long time and invited me up and so here i am and yes she carries a little trash bag with her and whenever she goes out for the dog walk she picks up because it's kind of a touristy area too and sometimes the tourists are not very, uh, shall we say, uh, mindful of the trash that they throw around. So anyway, we she picks up a bag of trash. Brings me. Yeah, I know. It's terrible. So um, anyway, yes, that's interesting. That she 
And yes, she said, when the heck is she going to be on the BJ and Bill podcast? And I said, we will make that happen because we she can. definitely has yeah. some, we definitely have some good stories to tell for sure. Susan was proud of last uh, podcast. She was telling all her friends, oh man, I made it to the podcast. <laughs> oh, really? That was like a badge of honor, huh? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Well, well, okay, fine. I I liked her post. She goes, I was on the podcast number six, mm-hmm. and it was really good. And then she said, oh, all the other episodes are okay, too. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's, now, and well, thank you. We appreciate the, the, we appreciate the thumbs up reviews. And uh, um, I had, uh, I was looking at our Facebook page today, which is BJ and Bill podcast on Facebook. If you want to look us up and I had someone saying they just found the podcast. They listened to episode six and they're excited on listening episode one through five. Awesome. Awesome. So there's your good segue into the reminder. If you'd like to get in touch, uh, like, like Mr. BJ just said, the podcast Facebook page, BJ and Bill, and spell out the and, A-N-D, BJ, A-N-D, Bill podcast on Facebook. Look that up. Uh, you'll find our little cartoon, our little smiling faces. And the email address is the same, BJ and Bill podcast at gmail.com. And if you have uh, a question or a story you'd like to share or whatever, please feel free to send it along. And we would love to, uh, we'd love to communicate with you. Well, awesome. I'm, I, I've been waiting for this all week long. Oh, you know, you're known kind of as the computer guru. True enough. Now people at home will not see this, but you will see this and you immediately know what it is, right? BJ Odom is holding up the hard drive, the guts of a computer and it's a hard drive that stores all the information on it. Yes, I know it well. Now, the the computer I had pretty much slow, didn't do any. I mean, it was a big box computer. Remember, you know, like the mm-hmm. whatever. You, I don't know what they called them, but it was like the big box. It sat, on so, the, sat on the ground, I know. This happened another time, and I pulled out another hard drive out of that one because, you know, the wife doesn't want to throw them away or anything because there's just too much information on these right. that people could retrieve. Right. Now, my question is, what the heck do I do with this thing? Use it for a paperweight? Got a great answer for you. Sledgehammer. Sledgehammer? (laughs) You know, I'd hurt myself if I did that, don't you? Oh, you might. Okay, you might hurt yourself. I hear you. Okay. (laughs) Have you got, uh, are there there any power tools in the house? Take a drill. Uh, Take a drill to it and punch a couple of holes straight through it. Oh, really? It will. That'll do it. It will. It will. It'll never be readable again. Well, yes, I'm going to say never, even though you should never say never. I'm going to say it will never be readable, And which is funny you mentioned that because I had a client literally just last week uh, who she brought home three computers from a business that she had, and she really wanted to make sure that they would, that the information was destroyed on them. And I had time, so I had a little software tool. Uh, that you can run on them. But if you've already taken the, the hard drive out of the computer and you had it separate there, yeah, just take a drill to it or a hammer to it or beat the heck out of it and get your frustrations out, and put it in the trash and it'll be done. So yeah, you could do that. But okay. if it's still connected like said, to the had, computer, yeah. I don't know where it is nowadays, but we have another one too because we had another computer that went out probably yeah. last time we moved, when we moved up here about three years ago, so. Yeah, they make, like I said, they make software that you can actually run on the computer that will go through and like, you know, CIA grade data destruction, but it takes, it, it, it literally takes like 16 hours to run because it's writing and unwriting and rewriting and erasing and, and just doing all kinds of crazy stuff to the hard drive. So it will never repeat, never be readable by anybody anywhere anytime so but you're not i mean yeah you you have sensitive stuff on there but it's not it doesn't require you know the government kgb style encryption on there so in other words i could could keep it in mar-a-lago you could (laughs) (laughs) yes you could well until the until the until the fbi raids your you know until the fbi raids your new place somewhere in central florida i think you're safe yes (laughs) that's funny 
And, and the wife hasn't left yet for her little shopping spree with our daughter, but I have a a WA or it's A W O W. And they're little computers. This this right here, I'm going to show you. Of course, you can explain. You can show right. people the size of this. Right. Oh, yeah. It looks like a, yeah, it just looks like a tiny little box. Yes. This is a complete computer in here. Awesome. And, and uh, I learned about these a couple of years ago, and it's like, they're like around 250, you know, I think the first one I got was like around 190. So I right. got another one, you know, I, I, they're just cool little things. And I guess I collect cool little things like my wife <laughs> collects things. <laughs> you collect but, technology. That's cool. But the one I'm using today, the turn on switch doesn't seem to work. Oh. I have to unplug it, plug it in, and then it'll fire up. Uh huh. Well, the one that I'm using today has all the expensive uh, recording. Like my when I record my voice for other stations across the country. Right. I've always, I always just use this computer. Okay. But. When the button went out, I said, I need to use, you know, maybe this this, this computer because the button's working everything. So yesterday, and I, and I sent you this message, but I started playing around before I you got back to me. And I think I have, I've made this one sick. I think it has a virus. Oh, no. Oh, no. Computer virus. And I even have like really good virus protection. So I don't know. I'll have to. But yeah, I was going to use this today, but it seemed like I didn't get the screen of death. But when I went to my email, I saw a bunch of little letters and numbers and everything else. I go, oh, this can't be good. So that can't be good. No, it can't be so good. So I, I yeah. unplugged it and I plugged in the old one. And now I guess I'll have to use that. But I'm, I'm afraid okay. one day when I plug it in and plug it, unplug it, it's not going to start mm -hmm. again. But may not come back to life. Mm -hmm. Well. Do what you can. So this public service announcement from the BJ and Bill podcast, and that don't is don't download this, anything. That was always my philosophy. The then what did scams, I do? I went and downloaded stuff. Scams and fake emails and everything are everywhere these days. And I about once a week, I'm getting a phone call from a client or somebody just who finds my, you know, Google Google's me and finds my website or something and says, yeah, I think I clicked on something in an email and now my computer is messed up. And you can hear, so here's the public service announcement. You can open and read an email on your computer, on your phone, on your iPad. It doesn't matter. You could, you could open an email to look at it and see what it says. But if you see something that says, Hey, here's the greatest thing from since sliced bread, or Hey, here's some great kitten videos, or Hey, here's a, pill that's going to make you lose 20 pounds by tomorrow click this link okay do not repeat do not click on that link because it's probably a scam or a virus or a something and you will fall victim to it so just don't just 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 say no Nancy and i've Reagan. always done just that. say no i've always done that Good until you. yesterday oh boy I wanted to find a cheap program to use, you know, to record my voice. Right. And I think the one that I thought was good and I downloaded, don't think it was so good now. Okay. <laughs> well, we'll, 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 we'll make that work. We'll, but it was so on anyway. Google. See, I, it was on Google. I thought it was safe. So it must be good. Is that like saying it was on Google so it must be true or something like that? <laughs> I don't I, I don't know. I don't. I, I hear you. I get it. And in fact, I'm going to start doing more. Um, I'm going to start doing more of my videos. I had been doing some some training videos and some teaching videos and stuff on YouTube and on my website. But more details on that in the near in the near future here, because some people have been saying, "Hey, we haven't seen a video." I used to do videos to teach people how to use their iPhones and iPads and stuff, and people are like, "Hey, I haven't seen that in a while." And it's, yeah, and it's like because yeah, I got lazy and I haven't done it in a while. So anyway. The public is clamoring for more, so I'm happy to help. So there you go. You should just tell them, I'm very busy recording this one-hour podcast every week. <laughs> I am super busy with the BJ and Bill podcast, but that, yes, you're right. So anyway, this is sucking up all my free time as, as I sit here in my lazy boy. As, as we're speaking of, you know, like computers, right? do you have a social media go-to? Now, 
you know, we kind of promote the podcast as two older guys. Yes. And I know we're older. And so I think that we're probably on social media that no longer is used by half the other world. I mean, you're I think, talking about young people. Yeah, I, I think they're more into I don't I think Snapchat even is getting old for the younger people. I think they're more there's they're let me be hip. We're into the gram now. They're into the gram. They are totally <laughs> IG. Absolutely. And that's not OG like old, that's not old gangster. That's IG like Instagram. You bet. <laughs> so yes, we should we should probably graduate or or whatever. We should probably migrate some of our stuff over to Instagram. I'm not, I'm not sure what we would do because Instagram is mostly is pictures and nobody wants to see two old farts talking to each other <laughs> as a picture, but, but we could, you know, you, but now that you mentioned that there's some things that could be done for sure. And, and maybe we'd get a little more audience there and God forbid we could even do something like TikTok or something, which it just, just, Chapes me, but now, anything's now my possible. daughter, you're trying to expand it, yeah. Your my daughter, daughter, she's probably when she go, you know, like the wife and I, we sit here and watch TV in the evening, right? I think she sits at home and watches hours upon hours of TikTok. Not surprising, I don't get it. I, I mean, yeah, I don't either, but it's not about it's not about us two old guys. When what we do, because we grew up watching TV, so we still watch TV. Now, I will tell you that I do watch some kind of TV-like programs on YouTube, like hour-long, you know, interviews and hour-long, like, travel stuff and things like that. So I get it. I understand. What I don't understand is the fact on TikTok, it's like, aren't they all like a minute or less or two minutes or less? Yeah, there, there is a time limit, but I am so into TikTok. I don't know what that time limit is. I don't either. And, and I don't, and to me, it seems now again, here's an old, an old, an old guy talking. So what do I know? But it just doesn't, I mean, all I see is kids, you know, that are like lip syncing songs and stuff like that. And I just don't, it doesn't appeal to me. So what do I know? It's not well, meant when for you me. get back to Gainesville, I'll come up and we'll do some TikTok dances and send those out into the world and see what happens. <laughs> oh man oh that's boy. scary just to think that about is, it yeah yeah <laughs> people would probably and then we could put like a donate button on the bottom and people would pay us not to do it you know yeah, could, so that you send us money for doctor bills <laughs> yeah yeah for the yeah 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 for the sprained ankles and the and the and the stiff back and all that from two old guys trying to do dance routines yeah no i don't really get that i don't but anyway that's just again that's that's and in the, the, the funny thing is, I mean, I, I just had this discussion with a friend of mine the other day, and they were asking about something like, you know, same kind of thing. Why do people do that? Why are why are the kids so interested in that? I said, it's not about you. You know, you're not you're not the audience. And we used to say that in radio. Remember, we used to say that all the time, that if you were like a, an 18 year old or a, a 16 year old, you're probably not listening to the BJ and Bill show on oldies 95. Because that's not your music. That's not, you are not the audience we are trying to attract. So BJ and Bill right now in their decade are not the audience <laughs> that TikTok is trying to attract. So I get it. Uh, you know, now the shoe's on the other foot and it's kind of painful. So I get no it. Kidding. Yeah, so, no kidding. Yeah, <laughs> well, no While we're on the subject of what younger people do today and what, you know, we do because we didn't really grow up with it. Now, right. uh, maybe maybe you are into this because you're a single guy and you live pretty much alone. Are you an yes. Uber Eats, DoorDash, or Grubhub guy? I am not, which is, but but I recognize that because I have friends that it's like, and and in my in the apartment where I live, I mean, I two or three a day are coming to the apartments near me. I mean, you know, I'm uh, the apartments that I live in have separate buildings, and each building has one, two, three, four different apartments in each building. So, so I can see two or three buildings plus mine, and I, like I said, day and night from from noon until midnight, there's somebody delivering food somewhere all the time, and 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 I'm I'm not that guy, which is weird. 
isn't it? Well, maybe not. I don't know. But I'm also blessed in that my favorite Chinese takeout is literally walking distance from where I live. And so is Domino's Pizza, which I tried not to do too much because, well, well, never mind. Um, and Publix, my Publix is walking distance from where I live. So I guess I'm either too cheap to do the Uber Eats thing or feel like I should be out there doing for myself. I don't know. How about you? Do you do a lot of Uber uh, Eats or very food s- delivered? Very seldom. I thought I would jump right. on the bandwagon, but really when you look at it, you go to the menu, the menu right. is higher priced. Yes. There's a delivery fee involved. Yes. And then there's the tip to the driver that is involved. And I'm going, you know, I know the price of gas is a little high these days, but I think it's cheaper just to drive down to the restaurant that you want to use Uber Eats with. So I don't use it hardly at all. My son, I think... Every meal at night, they use they use DoorDash, Uber Eats, Grub. I don't know if they use Grubhub, but I know they've used. I think Uber Eats is their number one to go to. But right. they've used DoorDash too, but I think every night right. for dinner. And there's another one to- called There's another one called Bite Squad. Oh, okay. Um, which I I knew about in in uh, Sarasota and Venice. They're big down there now. Some of those, and I I'm pretty sure DoorDash is one, and I know Bite Squad is another. Some of those have like a monthly membership, like for 10 bucks a month or something like that. You get all the deliveries you want. So they don't right. charge you a delivery fee. But like you said, you look at the menus online and the, and, the, and the restaurant jacks up the price a little bit and you're still paying the tip to the driver, which I get it. I mean, with the restaurants, I've read a few articles about that. And, and if we have any restaurant people out there, I'm sure they'll back us up. The, these delivery companies, they charge like 30 and 35% to the restaurants. So the restaurants are like, okay, we love the business, but we're making zero money on, on you know, when we ship a burger or, or, or a pizza out by, you know, DoorDash or Bite Squad or Uber Eats or whatever. They're making, you know, their, their margin on that is nothing. So they jack the prices up, like you said on the menu. So at least they make a couple of bucks for it. And, and I, I get it. I totally get it. So I don't know, like you though, but like you, I'm like, you know, if I'm just want to go again over to pick up a sandwich or something like that, I'm just as good to go get it. Cause now I'm sure I, I know that it's going to be fresh and hot or whatever. And it hasn't been sitting in the back of a car with three other deliveries that have taken an hour to get to me or whatever. I, and, I don't know. It's just not my style. No, well, Here we are, this. two old guys again, ranting about this stuff. And my son, every once in a while, like if I have a birthday or the wife has a birthday, um, what kind of food do you like? Mm-hmm. What restaurant do you like? Mm-hmm. Oh, well, expect dinner tonight on me. And one of those delivery services will come to our door and knock. And, you know, like one time we said seafood. So he got us. I don't know what he got us, but he's well like, way too flowing with his money. Uh, he <laughs> bought us probably enough to eat for a week. He bought like wow. this platter and that platter. And but you know, I hadn't thought about that, but that's a really that's a pretty darn good last minute birthday or other party reason gift, isn't it? Because, I mean, if you didn't think about, uh, you know, if you opened up your calendar on your phone today and you went, oh, damn, it's my dad's birthday or my, you know, kid's birthday or whatever, and I've done nothing for them, I can get on the phone. Like you said, I can get on, the, I can get on my Uber Eats app, order some food, send it out to them, and it's like, hey, happy birthday. Yay. <laughs> That's a cool idea. That's a scary thing. I wonder last. how many other folks have done. What's that? You, you scared me when you said the word last. I thought you were talking about our last meal. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, that's interesting. I wonder if we should ask, ask the folks at home, how many of you folks out there are using these uh, delivery things? And, uh, you know, what do you love about them? What do you hate about them? So, <laughs> yeah, that's a cool idea. I actually, um, true story. I actually uh, went 
and I ordered a pizza from uh, um, a national chain who shall remain nameless. Um, but it wasn't Domino's because I've mentioned them. It wasn't Domino's, but it was another one that you've seen their TV commercials. And I, I picked it up. I, I went and I got it because I was actually on the way home. I was coming into Gainesville. And so I ordered it in advance on the phone and, you know, they you drive in and then blah, blah, blah. Anyway, got it home. Didn't even look. Got it home. Opened the box. And it was one of these ones that was like, you know, hey, we're selling this pizza that's got like a million pepperonis on it or something like that. And it looked like it looked like somebody had just taken a handful of pepperoni and thrown it onto the pizza because they were all over the box on the inside, all over the thing. I mean, it was still edible. I mean, it was, you know, it wasn't a bad pizza, but it was like, really, guys, is that what it's supposed? So I took a picture of it before I ate it, before I took one slice. I took a picture of it. I went to the company's Twitter page, Twitter feed, whatever that is, you know, you would, their official the official hey. Twitter account of this pizza company. And I posted the picture and I said, really guys, come on, really? This is lame. And I give them credit. They wrote back to me and I haven't gotten, because it just happened before I left Gainesville last week. They wrote back to me and said, Hey, here's our customer service, our corporate customer service phone number. Call us. We want to hear about your experience. And I'm like, okay, okay. That's cool, and I'll probably get a free pizza out of it. So that's cool, um, but yeah, that doesn't corporate companies taking care to make sure their product is you know at least halfway decent. I appreciate that. Okay, thank you. Good job. Yay! Thumbs up. Shouldn't have happened, but at least you handled it well. Now that it has happened, right? Speaking of pizza, speaking of my favorite subject, nutrition experts say, "Uh oh, a slice of pizza." is a better breakfast option than most cereals. <laughs> so say, let's have pizza for breakfast. That again. Pizza <laughs> is a better breakfast option than a bowl of cereal. <laughs> this is me making my surprised face for those of you seeing on, on TV. <laughs> ah, okay, tell me more in the few minutes we have before the break. Tell me uh, more. Nothing like the smell of pepperoni in the morning. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> but yeah, you know, they say, you know, good... Pizza. When we were working in radio, yes, uh, and we did the morning show on WOLZ, we had these remotes. Yes. And we gave away, you know, free pizza at the remotes. We'd come in on a Monday, and who knows, the remote might have been Saturday or Sunday, and there would be some leftover pizza in the break room, sometimes not even in the refrigerator. And I remember Bill would always tell me, we're going to nuke it. There won't be nothing wrong with it. And we would nuke that pizza, and that would be our Monday morning breakfast. <laughs> I always, I had a friend in college who used to, that was his mantra. That was his <laughs> mantra. Friday night, cold beer, hot pizza. Saturday morning, hot beer, cold pizza. <laughs> <laughs> so well, you, you didn't tell me why. Why is pizza a better choice, or did you not? Is that just a headline? I mean, is there a story just a here? headline, basically. It just says that uh, nutrition experts so uh, experts, came from quote, experts um, air quotes air yeah. quotes nutrition experts <laughs> it's got to be real yes i read it online <laughs> it must be true i love that i love that <laughs> so if you are a pizza restaurant or any other restaurant or any other business that would like to reach a gigantic audience we'd recommend the bj and bill podcast so no, uh, feel free day. your commercial could go here what's that i said we are growing every day growing every day and so for the moment though we're going to take a quick break and we will be right back and now back to john with the weather yes andy tonight a big storm storm this get the soccer offer from pizza hut and pepsi with every two medium pan super supreme you get a real soccer ball and four cans of pepsi for free yes a real soccer ball and four cans of pepsi for free don't miss the pizza hot and pepsi soccer offer with every two medium pan super supreme you get a real soccer ball and four cans of pepsi for free what about the weather eddie don't resist and call nineteen thousand now okay round two name something that's not boring a laundry oh a book club computer solitaire huh ah oh, sorry we were looking for chumba casino that's right. ChumbaCasino.com has over 100 casino style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. 
Chumba. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Full work limited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. And welcome back to the BJ and Bill podcast. I'm Bill Stevens. Over there is BJ Odom. Just a couple of old guys ranting about pizza for breakfast, which <laughs> to me was, I, that's the best. Of, that's just as good as it gets for me, but I'm sure some people might say otherwise. So that's okay. That's okay. Now see, that's something that really doesn't have a generation gap. Our age. Pizza? Yeah. We, at our age, we love pizza. Teenagers love pizza. Who Everybody doesn't love pizza. It, it, I, it took, it took my father until he was in his fifties or sixties before he liked, before he liked pizza, which I never think I never understood because he loved his Italian food and, and all of that. And what's not to love, but I, I don't know if he just never was into it or whatever, but then later in life, he really, you know, got into it, of course. So I don't know. I guess some people come to it later, but I can't imagine because like you said, everybody nowadays, you know, from, from kids on up, there's, you know, so much, well, there's a lot more out there now too. I mean, with all the chain, fast food chains and all of that stuff, but yeah, pizza is pizza is pizza is life, man. Pizza is life. <laughs> we <laughs> have pizza at least once a week around here. I probably do, although I'm 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 trying to be a little bit more mindful with uh, my eating habits. But yeah, that's interesting that you say that because I was just talking with a friend about, you know, oh, I want to be so disciplined with my diet and my eating and all of that. But I have this, you know, there's pizza stores all around where I live. Of course, there are there are pizza stores everywhere. But, but you're um, in Gainesville, college kids. There are more college. probably where you are than anywhere else. Probably so, you know, from the from the cheapest fast food pizza, you know, the national fast food places, all the way up to super fancy and expensive and really, really high end. So, yes, there's never a shortage of good pizza where I live. So probably I would say once every week or maybe not even that often, every couple of weeks, I'm going to indulge in pizza of some sort. I am just it's, I just can't help myself. I just love it too much. So. That's my, my story. Wife, I'm sticking to it. Now, my wife is from New Jersey. Right. So she likes New York style pizza. Right. I'm Which a little country boy. From, traditional. Right. I, I'm a little country boy from Indiana. I like the Chicago style pizza. Harder to find when you're not in Chicago or the Midwest <laughs> or whatever. Right. I mean, I don't. I, I'm. I'm just trying to think if I could even put my hands on one in. in I'm sure in Gainesville somewhere, but I don't. I don't know of any. Do you, is your local pizza joint? Can they help you with that? Or uh, there is a local pizza shop that does. To me, it's in. I mean, you know, it's Chicago style pizza. There's no doubt about it. Right. And you'll you'll enjoy this. We went in there a couple times, and I said, "Man, I love this Chicago style pizza." No, this isn't Chicago style. This is Cleveland style pizza. Oh, I go. I didn't know Cleveland had its own style of pizza. I'm born and born and raised Cleveland, and I didn't know that Cleveland had its own <laughs> style of pizza. So, as it far as you could tell, what was, pizza. I, yeah, I was going to say, as far as you could, you tell a difference, or did somebody just decide that no, this was Cleveland and not Chicago? I don't know. That's what, because I've had it. Yes. And to me, it makes me feel like I'm eating a Chicago-style pizza. You know, of course, the wife, again, from Jersey, she likes her New York pizza, and she says, when you have to cut your pizza in little squares, it's not pizza. I go, yes, it is. It's still pizza. <laughs> I get it. So this Cleveland-slash-Chicago-style pizza, I mean, it was what we would think of, like, you know, with the – Stuff in the middle and another layer of, of dough of crust on top with oh know, no 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 very stuff. thin crust, Th oh. thin crispy crunch, and right. uh, cut in squares. That's my version of a Chicago style that's, pizza. That's Chicago. That's not Chicago pizza. Chicago. Oh, pizza then maybe I like thing. Cleveland pizza all my life and didn't know it. <laughs> oh my God! The great pizza controversy is about to start, folks. Right here on the podcast. All right, so. Again, if you'd like to weigh in on this whole pizza thing, 
post some pictures. There you go. Go to the Facebook page, post some pictures of what you think Cleveland, New York, Chicago, who cares? Poughkeepsie pizza looks like <laughs> just post it out there and see what we get, you know, cause we want to start getting some, some friends to, to post some goodies on the Facebook page there with us. So there, so that's wow. Who knew, now, there who are, knew we were going to start a controversy. Now, now there are, um, I got, you know, like I said, the, the square pizza, thin crust, there are a bunch of pizza Kings in the Midwest. And that's the Is kind that a of chain. Pizza. Is that a name? That's yeah, a chain. Yeah. Okay, I don't know that one. And, okay. and you know, if you get sausage, it's ground sausage, right? You know, you, all their meats are like ground. I love it. I mean, and to me, that that was always Chicago style pizza because I used to go into what was the name of that place? Uno's or something like that. It was a pizza yep. place. Yep. Uno. And that, yep. they they classified themselves as Chicago pizza, and that's what was we always had there was the thin crust, crispy, hmm. cut in squares. Now. Believe it or not, I owned, I was a crazy man. I should have been shot, but I owned a pizza shop for about two years myself. And what did we serve? New York style pizza. Yes. Well, that's, yes. And I, I remember that I, in Cape Coral. Yep. Yep. I remember the pizza joint. I'd been there more than once. Um, yes, you did serve New York style, but that was just, I mean, that's what you had. That's the, what you made. I mean, so I don't. Well, this is all over my head at this point. I just our miss, chefs just were really it. New York style pizza guys. Right. They were. I mean, Drew was the pizza god. You know, it, it, they, he he is no. He's he's probably in Southwest Florida was a legend. We've lost yes. Drew since then, but he knew his pizza. I'm glad you mentioned Drew because I just saw a post. From another friend of the show, an old buddy of ours, a shout out to uh, shout out to Ted Fitzgeorge, uh, another former radio guy who in and out of radio, but you know mostly real estate in Southern Florida, posted about Drew, who was a friend of his, that this was the anniversary of his passing this past week, I believe. So I saw yeah, that he, on Facebook. So yeah, he left the pizza shop, and I think about a year or two after he left the pizza shop, we lost yeah. him. He was he he was a good guy, but he was. He, to me, he was different, but he was a good guy. He liked you. You know, he, he had that New York attitude style. Let's just say that. What do you right. mean they don't like my pizza? I'm the pizza <laughs> guy. Why not go out there and talk to him? I'll tell him what real pizza tastes like. <laughs> yeah, thanks. No, you stay here. I'll handle it. Because Drew was also the size of like, he, he was he was like the size of Hulk Hogan. He was like about what six eight and about three hundred and fifty oh, pounds. Yeah. Not not an ounce of muscle on him. I mean, not an ounce of fat on him. I'm sorry. Oh, he, he was a big big guy, imposing, and yeah. So you didn't want him out there with the children. <laughs> and of course, we did kids magic shows. That was kind of like the draw of right. uh, Houdini's Pizza Magic. That's right. <laughs> And we did these shows, and if he was cooking in, I say, I'll bet you kids would love to know who cooked your pizza. I said, Come on, send Drew out here. And I think he came out and even helped with a trick. And he'd come out, and these kids would go, Oh my goodness. <laughs> he was a big man. He really was. And was but like you said, he was the New York thing. If he, if you were on his good side, there was nothing he wouldn't do for you. You were like you were gold. If you if you weren't, well, not so good. <laughs> That's so good. I love that. And but people are like that. That's okay. It's all good. Boy, well, look at this. We're tearing up the pizza stories here today. This is well, awesome. This is and awesome. I have one more, more. Oh, please tell. So when I first started dating my beautiful wife. Boy, what was this? A hundred years ago? Uh 110. I, no, no. I it think was so, like, yeah. Okay. It was probably in the late 80s, early 90s, maybe late 80s. Right. Right. So we had our first date. Everybody's a little nervous on their first date anyway. And I, and I, and I invited her to go to dinner and a movie. Perfect. So I pick her up and I go, you know, I was thinking, I want to be, I want to make her happy. What, you know, like I asked her, I said, what would you like to do? Where would you like to go to eat? She goes, Oh, let's just go somewhere and have pie. And I'm a boy, a country boy from Indiana. We never lived in New York. I'm thinking, this girl wants to go out and have dessert. She wants pie. But no, she wanted a pizza pie. 
I wouldn't have known it either. I wouldn't have known it in the 80s or 90s. I know it now. I don't know why I do. But I guess I have some friends who refer to it as that. But you're right. Pie. So did you go for pie or did you go for pizza? We went for pizza because I'm like, don't you? I, I don't know how I worded it because, like you said, it was 100, 100 years ago or so. Right. But right. I said, so you want to go somewhere and get a pie? And she said, yeah. And I go, you want dessert? She goes, no, 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 no. A pizza pie. <laughs> does, anybody, want- does anybody outside of New York use that anymore? I don't know. I would. Another curious question. Well, well, do you drink? Because you're from Cleveland. Maybe you did too. When I grew up, I drank pop. Ah, the soda versus pop controversy. Yeah. Never settled. Never settled. I don't remember because when I was a kid, I lived in, yes, I lived in Cleveland for a time, but there was also a time when my father's work took him to New Jersey, to South Jersey, and, and it was different there. And I don't, I don't remember which one was soda and which one was pop. I think, like you said, I think the Midwest, Cleveland, Chicago, that sort of thing is pop, right? No. Yeah. No. Yeah. Pop. Yeah. I grew up, I grew up calling it pop. And then, you know, I came down here and met my wife from New Jersey and she called it soda. soda. Now I finally just call it soda because I've been with her so long. She has me brainwashed, but we go, you know, we go back up to, you know, see kin folk and they'll say, anybody need a pop? And I'm like, Oh yeah, I need a pop. (laughs) I don't need no. And it's not that it's not like, well, maybe it is something that people still, because nowadays you probably would more likely to say, I need a, you know, a, a Coke or a Pepsi or a Sprite or a, something like that. You probably use the name of it rather than just pop or soda. Yeah. But maybe, I don't know. The old RC Cola. <laughs> RC Cola. RC Cola. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you're in the South, if you're in, because here I am in Georgia, if you're in South, you know, it's, it's uh, Dr. Pepper here. Everything is Dr. Pepper in the South. You know, I'm a big Dr. So, Pepper person. I, I enjoy it. I do. Yeah, it's good too. But okay, so go. Cool. We've talked about food and pizza and we got all that stuff covered. That's awesome. That's awesome. So I was curious to hear more about the packing thing though. How, I mean, are you are you're on track now for the last time we talked, you were talking about maybe before Christmas for the new house. Well, the contract that we signed says they'll we'll close, which I, I can't see us. Closing on December 25th. No one wants to work or do anything. Nobody's People doing anything Christmas plans. Day, no. But yeah. it says we will close on or before December 25th on the contract. How the heck would somebody actually write Christmas Day on a contract for anything? That just seems crazy to me. But maybe that's just the computer picks X number it's of days. Day. And then whatever that date happens to be, that's what it is. So obviously it would be before that if it happens. So that's cool. That's very cool. So, yep, we're packing up. Like I said, if you walked in the house now, you would think a tornado hit it. There is boxes on top of boxes and this and that and this there. And it's fine. Yeah, that's all good. That's all. So, will, I mean, you're obviously going to get a moving company, but will you move any of the stuff yourself? Some of, you know, because you could put some boxes in the car, I guess, but probably not worth it, right? Well, a lot of it depends on the sale of this place. Right. Let's say we sell this place after we close. Then we'll probably take like some clothes and we'll probably make, you know, three or four trips to right. the new place in a car and take stuff. Now, if we close before we would happen to close on this place before we could close on the other place. Uh, I have talked to a moving company, a moving and storage company. And uh, you know, they, they charge you hourly, whatever it takes for their guys to come in, load up and leave. And then I I guess, cause I said, what happens if our house isn't ready and we have to be out of this house? They will store your goods for a month free. Oh, free. I love yeah. that. But you do have to pay them for the time that they unload it into the storage unit and the time and the time they load it back from the storage room 
into the truck. So that's basically paying for two separate moves. Right. You're moving from the old house to the storage unit, storage unit to the new house. So I yeah. get it rather than driving directly. How far, how long of a drive? You said it's not far. How long of a drive between the two houses? It's about an hour. Okay. Yeah. Now, when we first bought this house, we still had a place in Fort Myers. Right. And we closed two or three months before we sold our house. And in that instance, we moved a lot of because we'd come up here on the weekends, you know, just uh, it was kind of like we had a northern house, but <laughs> <laughs> we had a vacation. A northern home. house. Woo, a northern vacation home. Yes. Now we call Southern this one Florida. the northern house because it's it's in Claremont, it's even farther north, which I'm asking right. myself, why are we doing this? I thought it was too cold here in Winter Haven. I want to go back down to Fort Myers where it's warm. But we moved I a agree. lot of the stuff during the two months before we sold our house. Right. And so really, I just had a friend of mine with a truck and he hired some people here and he hired some people there and he had them help him in Fort Myers. And he, I don't know, he I guess he must have a pool or something of yeah. people that'll do that kind of stuff. Yeah. And he hired a couple of people here and they unloaded it and he was a good friend. So he only really charged me for, you know, he had me rent the truck. We rented a U-Haul truck. I rented that. I paid for that, paid for the gas, paid for the guys here and there, but he did everything, you know, driving and all that because he was a good buddy. Thank you, Brian Corey, and you're a good, good buddy. (laughs) Moving always is such an interesting, interesting experience, right? You find out who your friends are. (laughs) (laughs) Now, I will tell you this. My wife has, you know, a new friend here in our neighborhood, right. which she has become very close to. And I guess she told her the other day, because I said, you better tell her before the podcast, because our last podcast was about to move. And mm-hmm. so she finally told her, and she said her friend cried. <laughs> well, you're only an hour away. You can stay in touch. That's yeah. fine. Of course, drive down if you have to. They don't want to drive up and down 27 either, just like we did. And that's why we're moving. <laughs> Ah, well, good, good. I, I'm glad to see and glad to hear that everything is moving along smoothly and you're making good progress and, and all of that. And now you also, speaking of, of, of the radio stuff, you still go into the radio station occasionally. That's, is that going to, how much is that going to change that drive? Uh, 10 minutes longer. Oh, oh, okay, good. So not that far. Not that bad. Okay, good. Awesome. That's, I, I love it. I mean, you got this handled. I love that. That's uh, I, I'm not that good when it comes to that kind of organization. Thankfully, I've been with people in the past that have been way more organized than me. Because if it was me, I'd just, you know, the last day would come around. I'd throw all the crap in a box and just, you know, let's go. I'm ready. <laughs> Whatever. But see, you know I saying? could do that, too, if I was single. Yes. I could probably move in a pickup truck. I remember back in the day, I there were I moved across country twice, and I'm talking from Texas. I'm talking from Austin, Texas, uh, back to Cleveland. Everything I owned fit in a five by eight U-Haul tra- U-Haul trailer with room to spare. Yeah, so I remember, and, yeah. and I did that twice. I did if that. I was you know, alone. Yes, there would be no knickknacks. <laughs> There'd be no patty whack. Give your dog a bone. <laughs> That's so good. Good reference there. Yes. But yeah, I would have the computer that I'm talking to you on. Right. And the monitor. And right. of course, Mr. Microphone would have to come along with me. Mr. Microphone. I would have a bed. And um, and maybe some plates yeah. and maybe some silverware. <laughs> Maybe it may be a lazy boy in a TV. I know yeah. Yeah, that's, that's what I did. That's all I did. And what now, when I got to Gainesville, I will admit that I kind of, I probably doubled my possessions because I bought a couch and a lazy boy and a TV, a bigger, better TV um, and a bed, a fancier bed. So, okay. If I had to move now, no way it's all fitting in a five bay at you all, but it's still fitting probably into a, you know, 12 foot U-Haul truck or something that I could drive myself. But again, I'm not, you know, Ooh, moving just makes my skin crawl. So anyway, 
Yeah. It's a, I, sh- I shouldn't say that. I, I've moved around a fair share in my life. Anybody in the radio business has moved around a fair, oh, yeah. a, a, more than most people in their lives. I remember we used to, was that you and, did you and I used to say that? Or was it somebody else at another radio station that I worked at? We used to call it, we used to call it white collar migrant work. I haven't heard you that one, but I would you haven't moved. Okay. So, so, you know, I mean, that might may or may not be politically correct anymore to call it migrant, migrant work, but you know, that's just, you go where the jobs are. And that's all we ever did in the radio business is you went where the job was. So I and you always tried to from, climb to the next level. Right. Right. And people would say that my, I, I remember I had family that used to ask me that it's like, well, couldn't you just get a better job where you're at? And the answer is no, because there's only one morning disc jockey at the radio station where I work, or there's only one morning news guy at the radio station where I work. And yes, I might be able to go to a different station in the same town, but probably not because everybody knows me or whatever. So your job in the radio business was to climb the ladder, but you didn't do it at the same place. You went from town, you went from small city to a little bigger city, to a little bigger city, to a little bigger city, to hopefully a big, big city at the end where hopefully you could stay and make some real money and and have fun and and get paid what you were worth, (laughs) but not always. Now, I will admit this though, but they were always better paying jobs. A lot of times I would move vertical or I'd even move backwards a little ways, but that's Mm. because like some stations I was just like with us, I was just the morning guy. Right. But other radio stations, I was the music director. So I was in charge of all the music that played on the air, or I was the program director, which was in charge of all the programming and the music that went on the air or an operations manager where you had like four or five different radio stations and you were in charge of all five radio stations. You know, you were kind of like the overseer of the programming for all five. So I had taken steps backwards, to take op manager jobs. So I had done that before. But yeah, my goal was always to get to the big city with big buildings. Right. <laughs> big buildings. <laughs> big budgets. Right. Yeah. Right. And 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 that's. I think that's one of the big differences that people don't realize when they're, when you're talking about media jobs, like TV stations or radio stations or whatever, you know, that again, I'm in, I'm in Gainesville. So the TV stations in town are small, you know, small operations, you know, and I'm sure that the people that I am watching on that TV station are probably recent graduates of the university of Florida's (laughs) broadcasting school. Because, you know, they're just, they're not quite there yet. You know, none of them are, you know, uh, none of them are network quality. Not yet. But again, you know, then they, they do the same thing. They move, you know, from Gainesville, they might go to Orlando. They might go to Jacksonville. They might, you know, and then eventually, if you're really good, maybe you end up in Atlanta or Miami or New York for some, you know, for God's sakes. So, yeah, it's you 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 climb the corporate ladder by going from town to town and that's a weird way to live but I guess if you're in the media business that's what we always did. That's what yeah. we Kind of glad to be out of that rat race myself. I enjoyed it when I was a young person. I really did. I enjoyed it a lot, but not so much anymore. I'm kind of old and set in my ways and you know, <laughs> here I am in my here I am in my lazy boy enjoying the time just to chat. So there you go. Awesome. And and it has changed a lot too. I mean, with yeah, in media, it, you know, now you got people that are doing the syndicated shows, like uh, the Bobby Bones show, because you know, country is my thing. But he's on like almost every iHeart Clear Channel radio station, doing mornings in the country. So he's now making really good dollars, and I guess that would be better than going to a major market, which he's in the major markets too. But more than right. one. Right. So I would say he's bringing down some really nice change. But like you said, there's only that's that's one guy who is now taking away probably a hundred jobs, probably a hundred jobs. Exactly right. Exactly right. So good for him. Bad for anybody who might want to <laughs> have one of those jobs for themselves. So, yeah, I get it. And. I guess we shouldn't complain because you and I had such a good time together. We were, 
at the sweet spot in radio there where we had a good time and a good station and a good, you know, a, a good company to work with at the time. Yeah. Could it have been better? Of course, but you know, we didn't get replaced by a computer. <laughs> and I will say this where we were at the time was probably, and I've been in radio for a long time, probably my best paycheck ever was with the DJ and Bill show. Mine too. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I know that. So and that, so all good. I mean, it's all it's it's all good, as they say. It's all good. So yeah, back then right. I made BJ Oda money. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever the heck that is, but it's I don't know. Good. But Stan used to say that over at ninety six K Rock all the time. If I could just make BJ Oda money. <laughs> there you go. Well, hopefully someday you can make BJ Oda money again soon. So that'd be. Uh, I don't. I, I don't think. Uh, Retirement will pay BJ. I don't think it does, but you never know. Somebody, so you never know. We could have a show sponsor and uh, commercials and all of that. So, you know, feel free to reach out to the BJ and Bill show. Oh, let's do the, um, because it's just about time to go. Let's do our uh, how to get in touch once again. If you'd like to, don't forget, uh, it's the same address. If you're looking up, you're looking us up on Facebook, BJ and A N D, spell it out, BJ and Bill podcast. Just do a search for that on Facebook or same address, BJ and Bill podcast at Gmail. If you'd like to send us an individual mail with your, your stories and your memories and whatever else, and we'd be happy to, to communicate there and look for us soon on Instagram, right? <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm, I'm hip for it. <laughs> You're hip. For- <laughs> All right, Mr. Hip. I appreciate that. Hey, like you we're could, down on the gram, man. You could maybe you could take some lessons from your daughter or something like that, and uh, uh, or find a grandkid somewhere, uh, and you know, get us get some lessons on what we need to do to be super cool on all of those other services. Probably keep our pictures up. <laughs> I would say so. Yeah, we can just keep using the cartoon. I think that's a, that that would work just fine. So that's good. That's and I good. like the new one. You now don't you don't have gray hair, but you got brown hair now. I know I was blonde for a while there and I don't know why they did. Well, I guess they didn't know what I looked like. So I was blonde for a while. And so I got my brown hair back and you got your beard back. Yeah. (laughs) So just look for us. We're out there. That's fine. You know, however you find us, like they say on the, like they say all the time, wherever you get your podcasts, we'll be there. And like it prescribe, not prescribe or what do you do? You subscribe, subscribe, (laughs) subscribe, follow, yeah. Now, if you're on on your iPhone or your iPad, they don't you don't subscribe anymore. You follow the show. So go hit that follow button for us. So you're updated just as soon as the new episodes come out. So we will talk to you again next week, right? Yes, we will. And up until that willing. time, God willing, and the creek don't rise. So until that time, have a great week. And it's now just up to BJ Odom to say, see ya. With Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to... Has anyone seen the bride and groom? Sorry, sorry, we're here. We were getting lucky in the limo and we lost track of time. <gasps> no, Lucky Land Casino, with cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry. In that case, I pronounce you lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details.